So space complexity. Space complexity is also important thing to calculate whenever we are writing any algorithm or any code. So what do you mean by space? See space means a memory that how much bytes and bits that particular algorithm is going to take it. So when we have to talk about the space complexity, we have to consider that how much memory taken from a specific variable or from the number of variables or from the logic that we have written or the business logic or the whatever the data structure or the code that we have written, how much space it's actually taking it. And it's important to calculate the space complexity because if the algorithm is taking a lot of space, then in that case, it might be a problem for the performance point of view. These days in the modern applications, space complexity is not that important because by default, the uh, applications take, uh, you know, uh, having a better hardware and better uh, configuration in terms of space and the RAM. But if you're running some small devices, let's say, for example, on mobile devices or uh, any any app that is using a lot of spaces, that particular logic that you're running or algorithm is running on the mobile app on iOS or Android, we have limited space or limited RAM available over there. In that case, it could be a problem. It might impact the performance of the application. So simple calculation that we have to do with respect to space complexity, that space complexity is equal to what? So space complexity is actually equal to, so auxiliary space plus space used for the input values. For example, what do you mean by auxiliary space? Now let's take one simple basic example here that let's take a simple method and then we'll talk about some of numbers also. So I'm writing public void and let's see this is a sum method and in this sum method I'm passing two parameters integer a and integer b. Then in the next line I'm writing integer z is equal to a plus b over here and then I'm saying return z from this function or let's see simple system dot or print l and print z. So what exactly we have done? What do you mean by auxiliary space? Auxiliary space means we have created a function. So function will take some space inside the stack memory. That particular a variable also will take some space. Print all ln also will take some space inside the memory. And let's see if I'm writing some if else condition also that z is uh, if greater than a 10, then I'm printing some statement over here. Let's see, for example, I'm printing hello over here. Right, so if also will take some space inside the memory. So then in that case, that kind of a space is called a and called an auxiliary space. But when you combine space used for the input variables, it means how much space will be taken by a and b and it depends on the the data type a is declared with int b is declared with int. Let's see in terms of Java, if you're talking about both end will take four and four bytes, it will take it. So if I someone is trying to x calculate if I let's see integer a will take around four bytes and then b will take around four bytes once again z also will take around let's see uh, plus four bytes then uh, this will take let's see some n number of bytes so let's see i'm just simply saying okay fine let's taking around some n number of bytes or maybe let's see four bytes it will take this condition also will take some bytes over here so when we calculate the space complexity obviously auxiliary space will be there number of if else conditions switch case statement uh, environment stack will be there in the stack memory also the number of uh, execution uh, will be placed over there print and it will print something on the console as well then in that case we have to calculate the space complexity then in that case if i say okay fine let's say it's taking around and other elements if else condition also taking around four bytes so this is giving you around 16 bytes over here for example let's say 16 bytes space will be taken by when we run this particular program with the this particular call method then we call it here so what exactly the time complexity if time complexity is also let's say denoted by big o or big o of one so it's a constant time complexity because it will be a limited space it will take because the data type is already defined it's not like dynamically the space is getting increased or something like this because every time whenever we have to call this particular function let's say i'm calling this particular function by passing 10 comma 20 here right so 10 will be given to this guy and let's make it a static so that I can call it directly. 10 will be given to this and B will be given to uh, 20 will be given to this. So it's already predefined that okay, fine. Both will take four plus four space. It's already predefined. It's always constant. Then in that case, I'll say, okay, fine. It will take O of space complexity. It will take it, right? Time complexity is different that we have already discussed about that. How many times this particular program will be running on the basis of given input here, right? 
So when I talk about that, okay, fine. Auxiliary space, once again, auxiliary space means some extra code that you're writing, like if else logic, switch case the statement. I'll write it for you, let's see. Switch case the statement, some nested if conditions that you have written, some recursive function that you have written, like this, and the stack memory also that you are taking it. That is called your auxiliary space. But when you combine a space used for the input values also, let's see A and B also that you are combining them together, then that is equal to space complexity. So remember this formula. Don't assume that, okay, if they're talking about auxiliary space, auxiliary space generally we avoid it. Why? Because we don't consider it. It's that not that important because obviously that the logic that you are writing or number of conditions that you are writing, it will take some space inside the memory. But we are bothered about that how many input variables that you are giving. And then when you combine them together, that finally we will calculate, okay, yeah, this is the space complexity for this program. Now let's take another example. Let's see, this is some of all the elements in a particular array. Let's take this simple example. What exactly I'm doing, I'm passing one array variable here. And then let's say I'm passing n length, the length of the array here. And then sum equal to zero, writing a for loop. And then I'm printing the sum over here. And then I'm assigning the sum is equal to sum plus array of i. So if I ask you that, what will be the space complexity for this so let's calculate that the space complexity for this is simple let's see array of the length could be anything right in that case it could be n number of elements so i'll write okay fine it could be n number of elements will be there and uh, integer n also we have taken so let's see this is the integer n means four it will take four bytes if there are n elements are there so i'll say okay fine it will take n multiply by four times let's see if in this particular array five elements are there it means five multiplied by four means 20 bytes it will take so it depends how many variables are there and then integer n also that we have taken okay then i'll say sum is equal to zero so again i'll say okay this is sum is equal to zero also integer it will take four bytes then we have taken integer i also let's see this one also will take four bytes right so if i calculate that okay fine what is the final outcome the final outcome is giving you let's see 4n plus 12 and if I remove all the constants from here, what exactly you are uh, getting after removing all the constants, the space complexity will be big O of n here. You remove 12 and remove 4 also. Okay, so in that case, in a generalized form, I'll say the space complexity will be big O of n here. Now let's talk about the factorial of a number. What is the space complexity for this particular uh, function, for this particular algorithm that we have written? Okay, so let's calculate that. This is a simple iterative wave that we are writing. We are writing, passing one parameter here and then fact is equal to one. Then we are creating this one and then just keep multiply fact with and storing it here and multiply with i and then just finally after the for loop, we are printing the value of fact. So in that case, if I really want to calculate what is the total space complexity for this guy. So let's see this. So n will take four bytes. So I'll take, okay, let's see four fact is also an integer it will take four bytes i is also let's see taking four bytes and then overall auxiliary space also if i calculate that it will take around four bytes so which is giving me around um 16 bytes over here tomorrow if i add more and more numbers then in that case it will be 17 bytes or 18 bytes or maybe some more bytes it will take so in that case what will be the space complexity for this so i'll say okay it will be a constant space complexity over here right because in this case, why it is O of n? Because the array length, the space will be taken on the basis of number of elements that you are passing in this particular array. That's what we are getting the multiplication of n here. But here, as such, we are simply saying, okay, fine, this is integer n. And uh, this is the overall fact one that we are taking and then other variables also that we are considering it. And here we are not passing any array over here. Here, this is simple just for loop and then it will be running from i is equal to n. Please don't get confused with the time complexity. In time complexity, if I calculate, it will be O of n, but the space complexity is taking around O of 1, the normal variables I'm declaring it. So again, this is 4, this is 4, this is 4, and auxiliary space also if I calculate that. So overall 16 bytes. Instead of writing 16 bytes, I'll generalize in the form like it's a constant complexity it will take. So this is how we calculate the space complexity. The space complexity also actually divided into three parts. One is the instruction space. I'll tell you what do you mean by instruction space. Second one is the environment stack. Every memory is, every programming language is having its own stack memory. So third, second one is the environment stack. 
and the third one that we have already uh, discussed that is called a data space right so which one is important in terms of calculating the space complexity so instruction space means whenever we have to compile our code right in the compiler we need some memory right in our system or in our computer to keep uh, to we have to store the code we have to store the data and everything then in that case some instru instruction space will be provided to store the code so that kind of a space is called the instruction space to store the code i will say like this to store the code environment stack means let's see one method is there m1 which is calling m2 method and m2 method is calling m3 method and m3 method is calling some n number of other methods let's see m4 method like this so what exactly we are doing we are let's see starting from the main method main method is calling m1 method so we are creating a stack here that main main to m1 m1 to m2 m2 to m3 and then m4 so this the memory will be allocated inside the stack memory and once the execution is done the memory will be deallocated so that kind of a space is called the environment stack then we are talking about the data space data space is used to store the data data means whatever the variable or values that you really want to store i'm talking about the variables i'm talking about the let's see some constant that you really want to use it some constant values right so in that case i can just use it so in the normal term what exactly we do that is space complexity if we really want to calculate we always consider the data space because this is the actual a uh, space will be taken in terms of space complexity or will be taken by the code in terms of variables constants and the value that you are storing and uh, whatever the variable that you are declaring tomorrow if you are writing a double or long then it will start taking 8 bytes it means 64 bits it will takes so it depends on the programming i am writing the code in terms of java but same thing if you do it in uh, c or maybe in some other al other language then you have to check what will be the data range and what will be the data size for the specific data type okay so this is how that we have to calculate that so whenever we have to write the any algorithm we have to check two things first thing is the time complexity and then we have to talk about the space complexity also that are you passing unnecessary unnecessary uh, input parameters unnecessary if else logics that you have written unnecessary if checks that you have written in terms of uh, auxiliary space also that we have to think about it uh is is high or is taking a lot of uh, space inside or your code is taking a lot of space on your system then in that case during the execution for that particular feature or that particular app it might crash or it might take a lot of space and then we are not getting enough space to check the other systems or other features of the application right so less stem complexity and less space complexity is making your algorithm more optimized and a better code that we are writing here i hope this is clear about the space complexity thank you so much